Alright, so hey, what's going on everybody? This is Jemai Miller again. I guess you could say the creator of Miller Lifestyle Fitness. Um, just a little bit about me. I'm a certified personal trainer through ISSA. Um, I'm also a certified strength and conditioning coach and a certified fitness nutritionist. Working on my other two certifications as well as my associates and then moving on to my bachelor's in exercise science. All right, real quick, um, this is my leg day workout with a focus in um, quadriceps. While you see me getting ready to do my, I think my third working set of uh, front squats, I started off with uh, my core workout. So today I did 25 crunches, four sets. Then I went on to do oblique crunches, four sets on each side. And this is a ritual before every single workout. At least four times a week I would do um, crunches, a different variation of course. Then I moved on to um, my calf workouts, which is your uh, gastrocinemus, that's your calf muscle. Your calf muscle is basically the hard, hardest working skeletal muscle in your body. Reason being is because you're on your feet, if you are on your feet all day, calf muscles are going to take the most strain or most of that work so in order for your calf muscles to grow you have to lift heavy and high volume so we're talking about 30 reps maybe 25 20 25 30 reps um, lots of sets and heavy weight so let's just say for the leg press machine today I did 600 pounds and I tried my best to get up to 20 reps and I did that about four times and I also did seated uh, calf extensions and I'm not too sure but I know I did five or six plates so that's just for my um, gastrocinemus which is my calf muscles and I work my calf muscles twice a week a lot of people is just genetics it's hard for them to get them to grow so you got to put in that extra work to get your calf muscles to grow. All right, so right here, after that, I did um, three sets of leg extensions and three sets of leg curls. What I did, that reason being is for to get the blood flowing into my muscles, get them warmed up prior to getting into my uh, front squats. After that, I did a quick um, stretch, of course, and moved on to my front squats right here as you can see this is my third set I started off with the bar twice 135 twice then I moved on to 250 which is what I'm doing right here and once again like I said before I'm using the resistance bands around my knees what I'm trying to do is abduct my knees out which is going to activate my glutes and in order for me when I activate my glutes that prevents me from collapsing my knees in or basically some opening my legs so that prevents me from collapsing my knees in this is my last working set right here 275 and I can only knock out five reps on this one Like I said before, the resistance band around my knees helps me to activate my glutes and my hip flexors. It makes me work my iliotibial band, which is that band that runs all the way down to your knees. And if you know a lot of physical therapists, if you have knee problems, they'll tell you to work your iliotibial band, which I've had knee issues before. So that helps. What that this is helping helping me do is work those muscles at times when I'm not thinking about working them when I'm just thinking about just doing a regular squat this allows me to work those muscles so that was my last work instead of front squats I did front squats today because later on this week I want to try and do heavy heavy um, deadlifts so I'm trying to save my lower back front squats helps you to activate your core right here we have my drop set I just did one drop set of 135 
And with this drop set, it was a little different. I decided to do the pause rips at the bottom. I want to say it was about one to two second pause at the bottom. Nothing too crazy. Just one or two seconds and I explode it up. <clears throat> Now, if you took a look at my videos before, you noticed that I wasn't really using resistance bands for my leg training. But the reason why I decided to add resistance band is because of adaptation and basically homeostasis. Basically, your body adapts to the working load and therefore you're not getting much out of your workouts. So what I decided is in order for me to get more out of my workouts, I added resistance band, a specific amount of resistance band, or basically overload training. And that's what I've been doing for these past few weeks until once again, homeostasis kicks in and my body, my body adapts. Then I'll go ahead and up the ante and, and switch it up, whether it be change, like you saw me do before I did pause reps or whatever the case may be right here we have my leg presses this is my final working set as you can see I have four plates on each side so I pyramid it up one plate at a time this is about 800 pounds plus of course the the uh, machine itself I was photo bombed here in my video and I think I did six reps regular and then six reps close grip once again, as you can see, I did add those resistance bands. This is something that I'm going to be using for a while to strengthen my iliotibial band and basically the outer portion of my um, quads. My quadricep, that outer swoop of your quadriceps. And then I went ahead and did a close grip, which is going to get that your vastus medialis, which is that teardrop that people like to get. <clears throat> Like I said before, this is my last working set. And I drop down to just two plates for a, a drop set or a burnout set. In your quadriceps, my main focus is what I was trying to say before. Your vastus lateris, which is the outside sweep of your quadriceps. That's what I was, I'm trying to really focus on with those iliotibial, with, with my iliotibial band using those resistance bands. And then when I do close grip, I'm trying to focus on that teardrop, that vastus medialis. No resistance band here, just repping them out. And I'm in, as you can see, I'm already exhausted. On leg press, whenever you guys go heavy, leg press squats, machines like this, I've seen a lot of injuries online. Like I said before, I'm a loner in the gym, but try to have a spotter. Do not go beyond your limits and get hurt, please. That's the last thing you want to do is hyperextend your knee and destroy your knee and have to get in the reconstruction of knee surgery. That was the last set right there. Now... Those are my two compound movements, front squats, leg presses, <clears throat> which was basically focusing on my quadricep muscles. I like to work on the opposing muscle group ever so often, or at least once during my workouts. So what I did was, as you will see in here in a minute, was seated leg curls. With these seated leg curls, I superset them with hip abductors. Abductors is going outwards. Adduct is going inwards. So that's what I superset them with. This is just my last set. I just wanted to give you guys a, a look at it. Exploding up and trying to control that contraction on the way down. 
and I only did adductors just to really focus on my glutes, my hip flexors, like I said before, my iliotibial band, and because that's been an issue for me for some time now, especially with my knee surgery in the past and my knee injuries. Right here, I try to sit at the very end of the seat, squeeze and activate my glutes at the very end of the movement. As always, I try to keep my body straight up and down. And that's about it. Like I said, this was just my last set. I did three sets, I super set them, so I went back and forth three times. Right here we have the last set of my leg extensions. I did them with my toes straight at first, and then I did, I wanna say five or six sets, of reps, I'm sorry, with my toes outward. Like I said before, try to hit that teardrop. Whenever you do movements with your both feet or compound movements and things like that, you really, a lot of people, especially for me, because I have a weakness in my left knee, you compensate a lot. So as you can see, when I decided to do an isometric movement, it was easier for me to knock out those reps with my left leg, but it was harder to knock those reps out with my right leg. The reason being is because throughout the entire workout, you may not have, I may not have noticed it, or I, I have noticed it, but I've tried my best to work on it. I've been constant compensate more with my right leg usually I would try to do leg presses with one leg and things like that but today I didn't do that I decided to do this drop set with three drops and just isolate one leg at a time and as you can see my right leg is more burnt out than my left leg unfortunately Last but not least, I finished out with walking lunges, three sets with two 45 pound plates. All right guys, for walking lunges, there's a few ways to do them, especially if you're walking. The further you extend your feet out, you're really activating your glutes and your hamstrings. The shorter you extend your feet out, you're really activating your quadriceps. So it all depends on what you're trying to focus on. At times, you may take a much further or longer step which is fine, but if you are trying to focus on your quadricep, try to take that shorter step. If you're trying to focus on your glutes and hamstrings, try to take that longer step. Regardless, your quads are gonna get some work, but what I'm trying to do is focus on my quadriceps because today is a quadricep focus day for me. My legs are fully gassed. Honestly, um, I can barely make it. I barely made it through um, these last three sets but I was able to knock them all out this is typically what I would do for um, leg day like I said before I would always hit my calf muscles first I think that's the weakest link and I, I want to get my calves bigger do them twice a week and I always go heavy as heavy as possible without compromising form and I also try to get as much, much much reps and volume as possible. So that rep range is 15, 20, 25, maybe 30. And I try to go heavy and as many sets as possible. Like I said before, I do abs four times a week. My, my training set is three, one, three. So I would do abs twice take a break and then do abs on the other two two days and then I would always warm up that that body part that I'm doing I will warm up the agonist and antagonist muscle regardless of what muscle I'm working that day I would warm up my quads if I'm working hamstrings I'll warm up my hamstrings if I'm working quads this is pretty much about it it's the last set 
finally after this I went on to do 15 minutes of hit cardio on the elliptical the reason I chose the elliptical is because my legs were gas makes no sense for me to hop on a, a treadmill and run the bicycle I probably could do that but that's what I chose this is my leg routine guys um, had no intentions on recording today but I was really feeling it and I'm so happy and blessed to be able to share it with you guys if you have any questions all the information should be here go ahead and look me up email Facebook IG I'm more than willing to help everyone every and anyone you guys take care bless